Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 5. This is the Honorable Mention for the Black Chair Edition. Let's get started. So I've been watching this program for a while. This is Season 4, and the Black Chair keeps making an appearance, so I want to give it an Honorable Mention at this moment. <laughs> All right, the first one up is Elizabeth McGovern, who is an actress. She's known for Downton Abbey. Uh, I first, she first came to my attention in Ordinary People, which is a wonderful film, directed by Robert Redford. She was very young then. Um, incredibly beautiful woman. Uh, you know, beautiful people look beautiful whether they're young and old. Us ordinary people, not so much. All right, four hours later, the easels are turned around. She gets her first look at the paintings done of her. This is a remarkable piece to me. Boy, I really like this piece. I'm not usually a fan of monochromatic work, but, you know, that orange and then that pop of the um, complementary color, the blue in the eye, and I do think it has a resemblance to her. There's something about it that just tells me that's a, that's a beautiful piece. But let's pull back. Sometimes when we pull back, we don't get the same impression when we're right on top of it. When you pull back, yeah, once again, it lost some impact, but it really is fun to see both the model, Elizabeth McGovern, and her image is, is done by the artist. The next one um, looks somewhat similar to her, is very severe in the face, in her expression. It just, it doesn't capture her as I know her to be on film. So, uh, I don't know what it is about this painting that is unsettling. Obviously the eyes, I mean, nobody has eyes like that. <laughs> They're a little weird, but, um, but it's a good painting. All right, on to the next one. This is more, if you've been watching my recaps, you know that the next one is more my style. I like color value swap outs. I like when people use colors to create mass and to and forms. And I certainly like using as few brush strokes as possible and less blending when possible. So this fills the, fulfills the brief for me. Um, does it look like her? There's a resemblance, but uh, you know I can't say she nailed it. I don't know that any of these three painters really nailed the um, her, her image. But here we pull back. It looks more like her when you pull back. You know, it really, it's kind of interesting that way. So important because most of us do not look at art the way we do as artists when we're creating it, you know, right on top of it. We, you know, put it on the <laughs> slap it on the wall. And most of the time we're looking at it from a distance. So good job there. And that is the one that she um, let's see which one she chooses. She gets to pick one of these to go home. Has nothing to do with the final judging. Yeah, she picks that one and look how thrilled the artist is. So great job. That's the one I would have picked too. Now we go on to the next model. The next model is Kadena Cox. Kadena Cox is a parasport athlete. She has multiple scler sclerosis. So that's very interesting. When she walked out, I thought, oh my gosh, well, she has to be an athlete because these athletes, they just have very different bodies from, from the actors and, and writers who show up. And she is in the infamous honorable mention black chair. Oh my gosh. I'm, I, they do use that black chair a lot. So now, uh, four hours later, the artists turn their easels around. We get our first look at the work that they did, and she's going to pick one of these to go home. So let's see what she picks, or let's see what our choices are. Here's the first one. Eh, you know, it's, um, I shouldn't say eh. When I first saw this, I thought, oh, that's a good painting, and it is a good painting. Does it look like her? Somewhat. Colors are vibrant. It's pretty brave, nice composition. I really don't have a problem with it, but I can't can't say it excites me terribly. Well, it doesn't. It's it. I'm neutral on this one, but let's go on and pull back. Yeah, you pull back, but yeah, it doesn't have the same impact. But you can see the resemblance between the sitter and the um, actual artwork. So I think she accomplished that. So for that, I would uh, certainly probably advance her, but. Uh, but, you know, we know the judges don't necessarily do what I want them to do. Here's the next one. This does not have a resemblance to her at all, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, it's a fine painting, I guess. <laughs> I'm kind of neutral on this one, too. But that's kind of good, because we've had some egregious paintings in the past. So neutral is probably a good place to be. But let's pull back and take a look. Yeah, yeah, it's a good painting. 
I don't know that it has a resemblance to her. Not, not, uh, uh, if, if it was my painting, I would, I would give it another go. It, but that's me. All right, on to the next one. This is the third and last one that she gets to choose from. This is way more static, way flatter. I do enjoy the red being used in the hair. Um, it does not have a resemblance to her at all. Now she gets to pick one of these to go home. And, oh, we pull back. Yeah, you pull back. It has even less impact. Boy, I would have pumped up that yellow way, way more. But I also wouldn't have put her... You know, we talked about this before. Sometimes a painting is an island surrounded by oceans painting. That's a lot of ocean around that figure. Oof. I, I, that, it, there's a floaty thing happening there for me. All right, Tadina's pick. Let's see which one she picks to take home. Yeah, she picked the first one. Yeah, I agree with her. That one had the best resemblance to her, was the strongest and most confidently done. So good job on that. All right, we go on to the third model. The third model is Fiona Shaw. Fiona Shaw has been in almost everything I've seen on the BBC or in Masterpiece Theater. Uh, it's so unusual to see her not in a wig and in period dressed of some kind. So that's that was kind of fun. But I guess she's uh, known by most people from the Harry Potter movie. Harry Potter movies. I've not seen the Harry Potter movies. I've not seen Game of Thrones, so obviously I'm out of the cultural loop. So four hours later, the artists turn their easels around and we get our first view of the th paintings that she's going to choose from to go home. Now, let's take a look. Now, I don't know why this person uses red paper. That's, I, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand that. But, but, um, but it is absolutely spot on in terms of a likeness of her. So, you know, when it comes to Portrait Artist of the Year, do I think this can win the competition? No, because it's not a painting, and we've talked about that before. The final commission is a painting in a major gallery, and I don't know that any drawing or pastel is going to, is, is going to be acceptable in that setting. So, once again, it's fun to look at uh, the real person looking at her image. Here's another one. This one they showed for like one second in the program. Sometimes they do that. They just don't show you very much of a painting. Um, this has a resemblance to her, but not as strong as the one we just saw. Is it a good painting? Yeah, it's a good painting. Is it a good composition? Yeah. Don't have a problem with it, but I can't say I'm going to remember it two seconds from now. Oh my gosh, we pull back. Man, pull back. Whew. Boy, does it lose a lot of impact when you pull back. That's a problem, because it's going on the wall. Ah, this one. Now, this is my personal choice when it comes to painting in general. I like it when artists use color value swap outs. I like it when they pump up the color. I like it when brush strokes can be seen. I like it when they use color to create mass, lost and found edges, all the things that turn me on. However, I have to say, it does not look like her. <laughs> but... I would choose that for my wall because I think it has the impact that I would have on my wall. I would respond to it as an abstract painting, not as a portrait, but I don't think it's going to go on or win. All right, Fiona's pick. Let's see which one she picks. Yeah, she picks the colorful one and look how thrilled the artist is. Yeah, that's the one I would have picked too. You know, we are looking for something that's a likeness, but we also want it to stand as a good painting. And I just think that's good painting. So she'll be very happy to take that home with her. Boy, it almost makes me want to go out and buy some uh, turquoise, <laughs> which, again, is not found in nature very often, so you seldom get to use it unless you live in the Caribbean. Okay, the final judging. Final judging, there are, are, are all our artists in front of the weird background they put Elizabeth McGovern in front of with those neon lights. Sometimes their backgrounds don't make sense. Let's see who the fi semifinalists are. All right, here's the first semifinalist, and you already know I was not a fan of this painting. But in a minute, we're going to be able to see the paintings that they submitted to be in the program, which will be a digital self-portrait, along with the painting that they did today. So this is the first semi-finalist for today. Here's the second one. Uh, you know I'm a fan of this one. I'm a real fan of this one. Um, but again, we well, in a minute, we're going to see this juxtaposed with the um, portrait they submitted. And here's the third one for the day. All right, good job, everybody. I don't have any problem with the paintings that they chose for the finals, not that they care. But here are the three finalists. It's always fun to see them uh, next to their easels. Also lets you see the impact of what, what 
these paintings would appear like on the wall. And now we'll get to the final uh, judging, which we get to see the digital image on the left and the portrait on the right that they did today in four hours. Now remember, the one on the left required, had no time restrictions, so you could take as long as you want to. And I think there's a very big difference between that one and the one that she completed in four hours today. So that speaks to the longer commission, that the, the prize is that she can certainly handle that. Here's the second one. Oh my gosh. Well, look at the difference between the two paintings. One thing that kind of I thought was, I wondered if the painting on the right is really an underpainting. I wonder if that's what she does before she puts her other layers on, which she would have done with the painting on the left. I think that's exquisite painting on the left. Boy, she can handle this commission. I would give her the crown right now, but uh, let's see if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow, she's a, she's a very fine painter. All right, on to the next one, the third one for the possibility of winning today's episode. What a huge difference between the painting that he submitted when he had all the time in the world, and it looked exactly like him, and the one that he did today. So clearly time gave him a disadvantage today, and I think they're going to take that into consideration because the final piece you know, the commission piece, which is the final prize, will have no time constraints. So they'll be able to do the best job that they can do in that time. So I was really intrigued. This was a good episode. Who will the winner be? And the winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I was surprised. This is the winner. Oh, I was kind of surprised because I, uh, I thought there were... Well, I know which semifinalist I would have picked, but... Uh, but, uh, you know, this is a fine painting. It's going to be fun to see. Again, we did see a difference between this piece that she did in four hours and the piece that she spent a lot of time on, her self-portrait. So that would have been factored in their decisions. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.